Hi everybody and thanks for joining us today. We're going to be moving on with our learning about the naughty bus and about um, place value today. Don't forget if you have any questions just let me know on Twitter or sometimes the comments work below these videos but sometimes it disables them because uh, they're videos for children so I think that it stops them being allowed to be on there. Um, thanks for following along and I hope you enjoyed today's learning. Let's get started. Today's plan of action, we're going to stretch and warm up, do some phonics, do some maths with place value, do some English and writing, and then end with a bit of topic. Find the space, I'm going to do a big stretch out. And a big stretch out, wiggle your fingers. Can you turn your arms as well like that, over and under? It's quite a good stretch for your muscles. And then go this way. And go this way. And let's do a big windmill with our arms so see if you can make them go nice and big in a circle. Actually, a windmill is going round with one arm like that. So do a one arm windmill and then another arm windmill. And can you grab hold of your foot behind you like that and see if you can balance? It's quite hard. Sometimes if you focus on one space, that's easier. I think we've done this one before, so see if you've gotten any better. Ooh. And then let's swap to the other one. Woo! This one's wobblier for me. Okay, and then shake your legs. Give yourself a jelly wobble. Woo! And should we try and touch our toes? Are you getting any closer at that now? Sometimes it gets easier the more you do it. Okay, what should we do for our big uh, movement today? Should we do star jumps? Okay, let's try and do 10 star jumps. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's get going. For phonics today, Lima's got his bag of tricky words here. Uh, if you remember yesterday, uh, Jerry, could you show us what sound we were doing yesterday? Oh yeah, that was it. So we were looking at the oi sound. Oi, oi, spoil the boy. Do you remember that? It's O and I teaming up together to make the oi sound. We'll learn a new sound today. It, it'll be one that you probably remember, but we'll still go over it together. But to start with, let's see what Lima's got in his bag of tricky words. Oh, you've got one there. What's this word? Today. And we've got, oh, this is a new one. The, eh, n. Then. We've got the hiccup word. Friend spells friend. Hey, I'll just help you with some of those. Jerry, you can hold them up. The, eh, n, then. S O M E, some some. What ass was was? Remember that one, and the a, they. Got lots and lots of tricky words in here now. What's this one? S A I D said said. Oops, we're at. Such a ool, pajama school. Well done. And oh, remember yesterday's word that we looked at? That was a new one. W E R E spells were. Were. Do you remember that one? Like we were uh, waking up early for school. We were going to the shops. We were uh, at the cinema. You do it for loads of sentences. Can you talk a were sentence? Well done if you've had a go at that one. Today's tricky word, we're going to do a new one. And oh, can you get it for us, Jerry? Thanks. So we've got here, oh, it's very similar to the word were. Can you see? What is the difference between these two words? There's an extra letter there. Can you see it? That extra letter makes this it doesn't say were it says where like where in the world where can i find this so the way i remember this is the word where is a question about about a place so where is it the answer has to be a place doesn't it so inside the word where, uh, where can you see this 
H-E-R-E, -E, spells here. So where is it? Here it is. If ever you're wondering how to spell the word where, just remember it's got the word here hiding inside it. So that's how I remember because they're so similar. That's how I remember the one without the H or the H says were. The one with the H, because it's hiding the word here inside it, must be where. Where is it? Right here. I hope that helps you remember that one. What I'd like you to do now, I'll hold this up and you can press pause in a moment. I'd like you to try and write that word three times, okay? You ready? Pause the video and try and write it three times. So now that you've written that three times, I'm going to hide this. In fact, Jerry, can you help me hide it with your tail? We'll hide it and see if you can write it without looking. So the word where. Where, remember, it's got the word right here in it, here. Starts with W, H, E, R, E. Well done if you did that one, fantastic. For phonics yesterday, we learned about this sound here. Can you remember what it was? Oi, oi, spoil the boy. Underneath our secret word today, we've got two words. One is real, one is alien. Are you ready to see? And see which one you think is real and which one's alien. Just draw the sound buttons for you. Okay, so this one, oi, uh, spells foil, like tin foil. This one, sh, oi, uh, spells shoil, shoil. Hmm. Which one's the real word? Can you point to it now? Well done if you said foil. Shoil is not a re real word. That's an alien word. Okay, so the sound we're going to learn about today is actually this one here. A and I making the sound A. A, A. And you want to know the rhyme for it? You might already know. Snail in the rain. So what you can do is you can write the sound A into your book. A and I. You can even put it in a box if you want to, to help you remember. And then next to that, can you draw a little snail in the rain? So I'm just going to draw one here. That, if you just draw a spiral to begin with, that means a kind of swirl. And then your snail can poke its head out like that. And snails have eyes on the top of their stalks, don't they? I think they're called stalks, these things that come out of its head. So we're going to draw a snail in the rain. Poor little soggy snail. Hey, hey, snail in the rain. We need to make him an umbrella, don't we? I'm going to put an umbrella there for him to find later. He'll have to hold it with his snaily tail. <laughs> there are four words here with our A sound in them. Can you try to sound them out? You can pause the video and have a little go. Okay, let's sound them together. We've got R. A, N, spells rain. That's how you write that sound. Uh, the next one, S, N, A, L, S, N, A, L, snail. There he is, snail. Next one, P, A, N, spells pain. That means when you hurt yourself, you can be in pain. So say if you tripped over and bumped your knee, say, ouch, I'm in pain. The next one, S, T, A, N, stain. Sometimes if you're eating something messy and you spill it down your top, like a spaghetti bolognese or something like that, it might leave a mark on your clothing and that's called a stain. So, oh no, I've stained my clothes. We've got rain, snail, pain and stain. And here I've just written a sentence, so try to read it on your own. Pause the video now. Let's have a go at reading it together. It starts with one of our tricky words, which is the. T-H-E spells the. The. s n a l Snail, g a n d, g a n d, gained. Gained means got or or gathered. So say if you gain, if you gain something, it can sometimes mean you win it or you you find it or you get it. So the snail gained an o m b. This is a long word. I'm going to cover half. So it starts with o m b o m b r e l a rella o m b rella. Umbrella. 
the snail gained an umbrella exclamation mark that makes our sentence sound a bit more exciting the snail gained an umbrella we're exclaiming it okay well done for reading that one i'm going to play a quick game now of sorting um some words into trash and treasure actually i've changed my mind we'll play that in a moment but first i'd like you to write some words with a I've just drawn a little box here because i don't want to waste space on the next page i like to save space in my book um, you can use the next page in your book if you've run out or you can squish it in like me. I'd like you to write some words with the sound A in them using this spelling. So can you try to write the word gain? G -A -N, G-A-N, gain. Okay, so that one looks like this. G-A-N, gain. The next word I'd like you to write is, and the lemurs both have these, tail. T A U tail. And that one looks like this. T A U tail. Give yourself a tick if you're doing lovely handwriting like that with our letter drawing shapes. Can you try to write the word? Rail, R-A-L, rail. Sometimes if you're going down the stairs, the stairs might have a rail on it to hold on to. It's something to, that you hold on to to keep yourself steady. Rail, R-A-L, rail. Well done. And the next one. Can you try and write, instead of writing rail, can you try and write railing, railing? So it's the same kind of word, railing. So hold on to the railing or railings. Can you write railing? Railing. It's the same as rail, but it's got a suffix at the end. That's an extra piece that says ing. Well done if you've got all of those right. Okay, we're going to play a quick game of trash or treasure now to sort okay, some so words out. Lima on the right hand side is collecting treasure words, that means real words. And Jerry on the left is collecting trash words. So we've got trash that are fake or alien words and treasure which are real words. I'll hold up a word and can you tell me where it goes? T -a -u -z. T -a -u -z. Tails. Is it treasure? Or trash? Can you point to where you think it goes now? It goes in treasure. It's a real word. Both of them have tails, don't they? The next one we've got. P -a -n. P -a -n. Pain. Is that treasure or, sorry, trash or treasure? Tell me when to stop and well done if you said treasure. Next one. A s face. Hmm, is that how you spell the word face that we have on our head? No, it's trying to trick us. Is it a trash word or a treasure word? Tell me when to stop. Well done, it's a trash word. Next one. Sh N A U. You can actually see one of these on the screen. N A U. Nail. So it can either mean a fingernail like that or the nail that you put into the wall to hang a picture. So trash or treasure? Which one does it go in? Treasure. Last but not least, this one's quite tricky. S -k -r -a -u. S -k -r -a -u. If you need to split it into two pieces, that's fine. It's quite a longer word, this one. Scr -a -u. Scrail. Scrail. Hmm, is that a real word? Tell me where it needs to go. Da 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 da! Shall we see who's won? So, oh, they've got one, two, three words. And 
So Jerry's only got two and Lima's got three. So today the treasure pile wins. Well done, guys. For well, maths today, we're going to be doing some place value. That means looking at numbers and seeing how much they are worth and, and things like that. So yesterday we had a look at spelling all of the uh, number words. And we tried to remember different ways to spell them all the way up to 20. To start with today, you could cover your spellings from yesterday and try them again on this page i'm not going to rewrite them because if you want to if you want my help for that one just relook at the last video because i go through all of them on there remember eight eight is going home today that's our way to help spell that one okay so for today i'm going to move this along you could start by writing the um uh, numbers again as a warm-up that'd be fantastic the more you practice that the better you will get but what I'm going to do today is think about the value of numbers. So do you remember our 100 square from Monday? Have a look at this. And I'd like you to just think about the top part of the number square for now. Don't worry about the bottom bit. I'd like you to choose a number on here that just take, that just catches your eye. So I'm going to pick that one. One and four. So it's got one ten and four ones. So what number is that? It's 14. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Play-Doh. You can use Play-Doh or you can use rice or pasta, anything you can have access to, or even counters if you have those. We're just going to be counting out a number. So I'm going to count out the number 14. I'll write it here so I don't forget. Maybe I'll write it as a word as well. Four -t -een. 14. And then I'm going to count out 14 little uh, Play-Doh balls. One, two, three, four, five, whoops, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 14. Now this, because it's a, a reasonably big number, it's quite a big number, it's hard to just look at that and say, yeah, that's definitely 14. So something that we do in maths to make this easier is we put together a 10, a group of 10. And so then when we look at it, we know, hey, that's 10. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go one, two, make a long line out of them. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So that becomes a 10. Can you see that? So I've got 10 there, one 10, and how many ones have I got left? One, two, three, four. Is it still 14? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Let's count it to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. It is still 14. So that's a really good way. Instead of just counting things out in ones, you can do it in tens, because I could just squish that all together and make what's called a 10 stick or a 10 rod. So that's 10 and that's four. It's still 14 because 10 add four is 14. It just becomes easier to count if we do it that way. If we were doing 15, I know that it's got one 10. If I look at the number on here, it even tells us in the way it's written, it's got one 10 there and five ones. So I'm going to make that. I'm going to make one 10, there's my 10 rod, and five ones, one, two, three, four, five so there is our number 15 can you try that with a few numbers on here maybe choose a few from the top part and then later on we'll practice the larger numbers for now i'd stick to numbers up to 30 so any from the first three rows try and make those with play-doh and then turn them into tens and ones good luck so with that your one. challenge today i said can you make these in ones so just using the little individual ones like this that i made with play-doh so just making numbers in ones like that and can you make 16 8 21 and 19. for the next challenge so slightly harder we'll put on here harder can you make these in tens and ones? So you'll have to look at the number and see what tens and ones it's got. A really good trick for that, I'll just show you on here, tens and ones like that. So say if you're writing the number 26, I'll just write that 26. 26 has two tens. If you write them in this kind of grid, it helps. That's t for tens and r for ones. It's got two tens, how many ones has it got? Six, so that gives you a clue how to make that in tens and ones. 
Okay, so it says make these in tens and ones. We've got 25, 36, 51, 63 and 99. We've covered this in class before, so this is quite a, a bit of revision, but it has been a little while and there's been a holiday in between. So uh, maybe just start with the easier one and build your way up if you're feeling a bit wobbly. The mega challenge today is instead of just making them out of Play-Doh, can you draw these numbers? So if I was going to draw the number 26, how many tens would I draw? I'd draw two. So the way we draw a 10 is a stick like that. One ten, two tens. And how many ones have we got? Six. So the way we draw ones is like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that is how you draw the number 26. So I'd like you to draw as many of these numbers as you can using our tens and ones method. Try to draw them. I've drawn, drawn mine quite large there so you can see them. But in your books, don't make them too big or you'll run out of space really quickly. Try and make your um, tens quite small, maybe something like this. Yeah, and then you could always do the ones like this. A bit smaller as well. Um, because we'll, whenever we see a stick like that, we know it means ten. Okay, good luck with your challenge today. We've been looking at the Naughty Bus story, which is a piece of contemporary fi fiction. That means a story that's been written quite recently. So um, if you want to hear that story again, you can either watch Miss H's video if uh, you're in our classes, or you can click back to my first video where I link, um, not my first video, sorry, it's video number 14, um, where I link in the description to <clears throat> another teacher reading the story uh, if you can't access the other one. So if you haven't read that already, you can have a look now. We've already made a story map and we've already written some sentences about each part of the story. So the next thing we're going to do is this. Can I write a character description? So in your book, you can either stick in a picture if you've got one printed out of the naughty bus or you can draw one. So I'm going to draw a little bus here. I'm going to give it a face. Of the naughty bus. It's such a cheeky character, isn't it? You could even colour it in. So I'm going to get my red crayon out of here. Because it's red in the bus. If you go to London, you'll see lots of red buses. They're, they're a traditional bus in London. Have you ever been on a red bus? Like the naughty bus? If you have, you could sh share a story in the comments or maybe on our blog or Twitter. I'd love to hear from you. So I'm just colouring my bus in red. Oh, I just actually used an adjective. When we're doing a character description, we're describing them, which means we need to use describing words. So in our class, we have a little song where we go, an adjective is a describing word. And I bet you've been singing that one at home sometimes as well. So maybe some of the parents even know that one. Um, so with our describing words, it tells us what something is like. It can tell us what it looks like, how it moves, if it smells or if it's how it feels to touch. So with our bus, I'm just going to think of some adjectives to write around him. So we know for one, he's definitely a bit naughty. Bit of a cheeky bus as well. Oh, there's another word. So I've got naughty, n or t. Very strange spelling there. Watch out for this bit. We've got cheeky. We've got, you know what I think he is? He's quite adventurous. Because he does go on an adventure all on his own. Ad, then, t, your, house. Very strange spelling. Look at that long word. If you're wobbling, you can use mine or you can ask an adult to help you. Or just have a try. Have a try at your spelling and see if you can manage to get it. Naughty, cheeky, adventurous, red. Do you know, um, do you remember a while ago we used the word emerald instead of green when we were describing some grass? Does anyone know what the jewel name for red, when you have a red jewel, what it's called? It's actually called a ruby. So instead of writing red bus, you could write ruby red or just ruby. Yeah, R-U-B-Y, Ruby. So it's naughty, cheeky, adventurous, Ruby, red, um, small or tiny. It's quite funny, actually, as well. I think that's why we like this story so much. It's quite a funny bus. He gets himself into all sorts of 
uh, funny situations. So once you've written some adjectives around your bus, you could try and share some in the comments if the comments are working, or if not, just um, maybe you could add your, your picture to the blog, that would be lovely. Then underneath, we can write some sentences using these words. So this will really help us to make our 2A sentences now. Before we start, I'm going to remind us of our ingredients or the rules for writing. We need capital letter every time. Don't let it trick you. And sometimes I've seen children writing full words in capital letters like this, like bus. If you're doing a capital letter, it just needs to start with a capital and then the rest of them are lowercase. Don't let it trick you. Try not to do full words in capitals. Or if you do, just cross it out and write it again. So we need capital letters, full stops. We need finger spaces. And we need to check that it makes sense by rereading it again. So I'm gonna put those in a box again. And then we can use this to check as we're going. So my favorite word out of this, I think it's adventurous. So I'm going to write, let me think of my word first. If I just start writing, it might not make sense. So I'm gonna think my sentence first. I'm gonna say, the, the naughty bus is very adventurous. The naughty bus is very adventurous. Okay, that's my first describing sentence. One, two, three, four, five, six words. The, with a capital T, finger space, naughty. Do you know what? I've actually changed my mind to make it even better. Do you know we do two A sentences? So I can say the naughty red bus with a comma, so naughty red bus, because there are two adjectives here, one there, one there, right next to each other. That's called a two A sentence. The naughty red bus is the a E, very, finger space, add, then, sure, I'm going to use this spelling to help me, O, U, S, full stop. Let's read it back together. The naughty red bus is very adventurous. What a cool sentence. I think that deserves a double tick. Woohoo! And I've even got a full stop at the end as well. So we've got all four of these ingredients, which means that sentence is super. Let's try another one. I could say, the, ru the funny ruby bus is small. The funny, comma, because there are two adjectives next to each other, ruby, remember that means red. The funny ruby bus, is small. Full stop. The funny ruby bus is small. Okay, these are my sentences. You can write even more and you could even use more adjectives than I've done. I bet you thought of even better ones. If you want a super mega crazy challenge, you could try and use an adverb, which is a bit of year two writing there. An adverb is where you tell me how the bus is moving. Let me see if I can find my special pen. Hmm, I might have to just use a pencil instead, actually. So adverb is things that end with, usually end with L-Y. So slowly, quickly, cheekily. So you could say, the, the red bus drove slowly through the beans, because in the story it goes through a, a plate of beans, doesn't it? Or quickly. Another really good word that means quickly is swiftly, swiftly. Swiftly, swiftly. That means quickly. So you can say, the little red bus swiftly drove through the plate of beans. Or cheekily, cheekily, cheekily. The adventurous bus cheekily drove away. Okay, you might need this word to help you with your spelling. I'll just put the word drove up here. D, er, split, o, v, drove like that, okay? 
Right, that's your challenge for today. Write some sentences to describe the red bus. Off you go. I can't wait to see your work. For our topic this term, it's called I like to move it, move it. And it's all about transport. So, to ratten super or to. So transport is a very long word that just means getting from one place to another. And so there are very easy ways of doing transport. So the, probably the most common one that we tend to do is walking. We use our feet to walk. So feet and walking are actually a method of transport. Oh, that's a funny foot that I've drawn. You could draw them with shoes on, but feet are a method of transport. That's a very simple one. What other ways do we use to get from one place to another? Say if we had to go all the way from Manchester to um, London, what could you use to get from Manchester to London? Have a think. And what I'd like you to do is write down or draw, like I've done, any methods of transport that you might be able to do. Pause the video now because I'm going to have a go on mine and then I'll show you in a minute. So pause it now, OK? Another method you could use, this could work from going from Manchester all the way to London because it's very far. You could drive. It would hurt your feet if you walked all that way. Another way you could go, I'll just show you. Another way you could go is by t r a n. Hey, it's the A sound we did today. t r a n spells train. So you could go by train. That's a really quick way to get there. Another way you could go is you could go by aeroplane. It's only a short journey, so an aeroplane looks something like this. So you could go by P, U, split A, plane. You go by plane. Have a go at drawing any other methods of transport that you can think of. Um, I'll give you a clue. There's one beginning with B, B, I, K. What's that one? Okay, see if you can think of as many transport methods as you can and make a big picture with all of them on there. I'd love to see them at the end. That's your challenge for today. Okay, good luck, guys. Okay, that's the end of our video for today. I hope you've enjoyed joining in and I really would love to see your efforts with your work today. So please do share them on the blog. Thank you if you've already sent me pictures and uh, messages. I really love receiving them. Okay, take care, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.